Welcome to Every Church of Peace Church. This is a program where every week we will promote the belief that the church could turn the world towards peace if the church lived and taught as Jesus lived and taught. Today, my name is, well, my name is Don Edwards. I'm your host for this show, this program, and this is our debut program. And sharing this special moment with me is my friend, my fellow traveler in the Every Church of Peace Church movement, Dr. C.T. Vivian. Doctor, welcome. Uh, Every Church of Peace Church. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you for the idea. Thank you for doing it. Well, it's God's idea. All right. Uh, C.T., one of the uh, seminal moments in the uh, civil rights uh, movement that was caught on tape was the time where in Selma you confronted uh, the evil of uh, Sheriff Jim Clark there in Selma in the courthouse as you were attempting to register uh, a group to vote. And uh, you were beaten down, uh, but you rose up. How did you feel and uh, what did you say to Jim Clark and, and when you faced that evil? Well, I, uh, I remember saying to Jim Clark is that uh, you can turn your back on me, Sheriff Clark, but you can't turn your back on justice. That was the that was the kind of understanding. I remember he had uh, 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 hit me in the solar plexus with a club that had caused me to have to run backwards down the steps, and uh, you automatically start up the steps with the instrument in your hand because when you hit in the solar plexus, you actually grab. Uh, and I found out later is that, but I understood what I was doing, and he could have shot me down, but for a memory that had come to me of a policeman from Philadelphia telling me that was one of the police tricks. And I turned and said, we'll place this in the gutter where it belongs, right? The act of the, this instrument of violence. You and I started back, uh, No, I didn't take it. He, <laughs> see, he, hits, he hit me right in the solar plexus. Mm. And when I grab, which you do automatically, then he just let go. Mm. Uh, see what I mean? And that's the idea. So as I start down the, down the steps, all right, mm. then I, uh, because I used to run backwards, I was able to keep from falling. I got to the bottom of the steps and to the sidewalk. But I automatically started to run back up the steps to confront him. Right when I realized that it uh, that this policeman had uh, told us that as we were driving across Mississippi, Dr. King, Andy Young, I, and he, and uh, uh, so it just came back to me. It was just like a flood of memory. It just came from out of out of nowhere, right? Mm. And and I remembered it. So I turned and said, uh, "We'll put this where it belongs in the gutter." Mm. And that's where violence belongs in the gutter of life, right? And I started back up the steps. Uh, but uh, what the policeman had told us, those were part of the tricks that allow a policeman to shoot you if he desires to do so. He would have probably not shot me in front of that many people. But under other circumstances, that would have been the natural thing. It gives an excuse for beating. Is that uh, uh, no matter what level of violence you deal with, there are tricks to cause you to come into it. When I was in Chicago working with YMCA, is that they used to tell, the policemen used to tell young people on the south side, uh, 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 oh, well, I don't want to have to arrest you. So I tell you what, why don't you just, when we get to this alley, run down the alley, right? <laughs> and then you can get away. And then they use them for target practice, mm -hmm. all right? Is, the, is that uh, 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 Martin King says violence creates more problems than it can ever solve. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're dealing with right now as we're dealing with this war. It's what you always deal with when you're dealing with violence. Violence creates more problems than it solves. Well, C.T., how, how do we get to this point uh, of uh, what were your, your nonviolent roots? How did you learn to, to follow the path of the nonviolent Jesus? Well, see, in the first place, my understanding of Jesus was always nonviolent. In other words, it's there 
it says love your enemies, all right? Uh, it's there. It says uh, uh, that we're supposed to love people even as Jesus loved us. Not just the golden rule, the platinum rule, you see. Golden rule as you would have them do unto you. That makes man as the, as the arbitrator, as the bargainer, right? Mm -hmm. Is that when Christ said it, he says, uh, uh, love your fellow man as I have loved you. Love ye one another even as I loved you. Well, that makes Christ the arbitrator, right? is that that's the ultimate piece of the action. We have to go to the scriptures themselves, right? See, isn't it interesting? We have a born-again Christian in, in the president. He calls himself a born-again Christian. They said, well, how do you know you're born again? And he says, well, you know when it happens to you. Well, uh, 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 I prefer the word and the message of Jesus to the feeling of myself or any other man. Huh? Mm -hmm. Feelings doesn't get it. At what level does that, does that show that you're committed to the Christ? It is by, uh, 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 by what we do. By their fruits ye shall know them, Jesus said. Not by their feelings will you know them. Right? Right. Uh, and, uh, and it's these kind of issues that have got us caught up in American Christianity. Always has. Uh, because uh, we have not chosen to really read, follow, live by, ultimately, the Word of Christ. Well, uh, you bring up a point here that uh, was not too long ago recently polled. There was a Gallup poll. And uh, as I remember it in the paper, it had uh, uh, 64 in, in reference to those in favor of the, the war, 64% uh, of those who favored the war considered themselves evangelistic uh, Christians, uh, born again Christians, and uh, and then I worked down to 49 percent uh, of those who favored the war were those who felt that religion was not a very important part of their life. So, uh, which is kind of an interesting dynamic. The the more you claimed Christ, the more you were interested in state violence and and war. And uh, how, how do we get to that point where those that don't go to church uh, are more inclined to follow uh, the, the love of, of Christ and not uh, uh, and loving your enemy uh, than those who go to church uh, two or three times a week? Well, I tell you what, on the central issues of justice and injustice, right and wrong, the Christian church often is in that position. Like on racism, right? Mm. Is that uh, the Christian church most racist hour of the week, right? Which and that is and that is within the institution that uh, creates our values for us, right? Mm. And yet it's the most racist. Now, what's behind both of those and all the rest that are like that is that the issue is Christ or culture. You get it when you're more concerned about the culture than you are the Christ. And when you cause the Christian church to serve the culture rather than, uh, uh, than, uh, than the Christ, it comes back to, are you really Christian enough to live by Christ or are you just using the institution to feel good, in, in, having the institution the for club. so that's the boy, that's exactly where I was going. You're exactly right. How much is it a social club rather than a Christian organization? Uh, uh, is that and the, uh, the, uh, the, the central issue is Christ or culture? Mm -hmm. Are you going to live by the culture or are you going to live by the Christ? Yeah. Well, I guess that's what the, the, the early, uh, that's what Christ raised. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the issue right in front of us when, uh, you know, are you going to follow the Caesar or are you going to follow yeah. the God? Yes, right. And, uh, and that was a conflict between the, the culture yes, right. and, 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 and the Lord. Yeah, precisely. And we, we, we see that type of dynamic uh, so, so much now that uh, uh, sometimes the culture is particularly in, in this country yeah. is so embedded in violence that uh, we don't even uh, realize that uh, that war is is death and destruction precisely and uh, because we we uh, we glorify it we make we make heroes who participate in it and um, uh, and we focus the media on one or two uh, individuals, uh, for example, uh, uh, we kind of 
focus in on a, a POW or we focus in on one Iraqi child who, uh, who may have been uh, destroyed uh, emotionally as well as physically, uh, but we don't look at the larger picture. I think in some sense that we <coughs> numb ourselves because we don't really know that we're doing wrong. Well, you see, the point is, is that would you say we don't know or we don't want to know? And, and would we say that, that for those who don't really know is because the Christian church has not taught them? Right, especially when we're talking about this issue of how do all these people go to church, right? Mm -hmm. And yet, uh, the larger percentage uh, uh, consider it's quite all right to go to war with anyone you choose mm -hmm. when you choose, because this war says that, mm -hmm. right? Is that uh, 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 how do you do that? It is interesting to me that the that the that the churches who more abide particularly on these great issues like war and racism, right, that b abide by uh, uh, what Christ actually says are some of the smallest uh, in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, the Quakers, the Mennonites, yes. the Brethren, right? These are ones who uh, go to jail rather than go to war to kill people, yes. right? They're willing to suffer mm -hmm. rather than to cause other people mm -hmm. suffering. Is that uh, uh, they've made their choice between Christ and culture, uh, and they did it at the ultimate end. Well, I think it's, somehow the Christian church is stuck. Uh, from going there, they're they're stuck on convenience, uh, stuck on on comfort, because uh, when you step beyond and do what Jesus did, when, yes, when he confronted evil, uh, when he healed the ear of the soldier that uh, that uh, was a Peter that okay. that that struck out the sword yeah. and and healed that yeah. uh, healed that person, he took a step uh, as an example that many Christians are just. Afraid, yeah, afraid to go there because uh, it, it does mean a commitment. It, it means to stand up to evil uh, in a nonviolent way when our instinct, in a way, is to strike back. Yeah. But 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 the uh, but the lesson that that we should get from from the example of of, of Jesus Christ is a, is a lesson that we confront evil. We stand up to it as you stood up to it. Yeah. Uh, on, in Selma. And as he stood up to it in in the garden, and as he stood up to it on on the cross, uh, and as Martin that, King, that, uh, and, uh, and as Martin, uh, sure, see, and Gandhi uh, uh, and others. That's it, because if uh, Martin stood up to the war and spoke out, and it was interesting to me uh, that after Martin stood up and made a statement, uh, just two or three weeks afterwards, the Pope stood up. Yes. It says it says that if we are really willing to really stand up to injustice, so will other people. Yes. Uh, for instance, you were talking about when I was knocked down in in Selma and got up and kept uh, speaking back to uh, those in charge and asking them questions. Is that when I was knocked down, people flooded away. Mm -hmm. When I stood up and started talking again, people came back. Right? right. So, so my my point being is just a symbol, a small symbol of the fact that, uh, uh, and the larger symbol is, a Jesus goes all the way to the cross and is and is crucified. But what happens is that uh, uh, the following that now is here, the entire Christian Church, the Western Western culture, is supposed to be built upon it, and it could really be built upon it if it would decide to obey Christ instead of culture. We're going to uh, have a little vocal break. We have a guest, Teresa Hightower, Bose oh, Davis. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, we're going to imagine a world of peace. It's marvelous. There's no heaven It's easy if you'll try There's no hell below us 
above us only sky eyes. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there are no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for, and no religion to. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. And maybe someday you will join us, and the world will be as one. Yeah. Imagine no possession. A brotherhood of man. Imagine all the people living life in peace. Oh, well, you may say that I'm a dreamer. And maybe someday you will join us, and the world will be as one. Yeah, will be as one. Yeah. Maybe we can be as one, the way that God meant for us to be. We'll be as one. Well, that was beautiful, uh, Teresa Hightower, Moses Davis. Imagine <laughs> all the people living in peace. Yes. Yes, so you may think that I'm a dreamer, yes. but I'm not the only one. Right. Exactly. <laughs> in fact, all of us have a dream of peace. Hmm? Yes. In fact, uh, peace is the term that's used all over the religions of the world, uh, even before they knew each other, right? Is because that's the deepest desire yes. uh, of, of the human spirit. Yes. Hmm? Hmm. I, uh, I know that's right. And... I'm wondering why it is uh, that we can't get there. Uh, what, what are the things that are holding us back from really each one reaching out to, as Jesus did, to express a love for humanity? And uh, how, uh, what do we do in the face of of, of, uh, of evil? People want to know: Well, how can I be nonviolent when there's so much true evil in the world? Yeah. Well, I tell you what, is that you have to consider that um, Jesus never saw peace as something off by itself. Peace is the outcome 
of love and truth and justice and you can't have peace without these hmm? uh, uh, is that and that and that the real struggle is toward those those together will get you peace you can't have it otherwise the other thing is is that when you talk about love it's uh, uh, it, what we found in movement or at least what stood out for me more than any other single thing when it comes to nonviolence is that it, it it takes radical love to defeat radical evil mm -hmm. all right is that if you're not willing to be radically loving you will not really defeat radical evil you will be allowed to exist within but you'll never get rid of the the, the the evil that really is always a threat to everyone who chooses to find true peace or uh, uh, for the populace mm -hmm. you see the the other way is to find what you call individual peace right but you really you can only find peace in terms of all other people around you if there's evil is continually controlling your life you really cannot love like you would choose to well our, our, our culture is, is saying and our, our leadership our political leadership yeah. is saying that uh, a way to peace is through war that's right that's what now, they're saying that's what they're saying now um, my question is, has that ever worked? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I knew what you were going to say, Don, because this is what anyone who's done any thinking at all has we've to, had, has to a, say. We've had a lot of wars. I think precisely, and for centuries. Yes. Huh? And, and every culture has done it. You know, the, 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 one of the real tragedies of this situation is that we are the only power in the world the major uh, the united states is the only power in the world today given that and given our massive wealth we we were talking about two trillion dollars that we were trying to find out what to do with uh, that was the big uh, the, peace uh, dividend. Uh, uh, the peace dividend right is that the point is is uh, the buildings get knocked down and instead of reacting in a Christian way as a Christian nation would or even as logical people when it comes down to it right is that uh, uh, we did exactly the opposite and as a result we don't have two million dollars to two trillion dollars to spend on people in fact what we've done is burden our children uh, violence creates more problems than it solves as Martin right is that uh, uh, and and so now we burden our children with debts from this war and we still Still don't know what happened to the two trillion by the way because you see the other thing that keeps us from it is greed yeah. hmm? is that uh, uh, where does the money go and what what I learned from politics follow the dollar hmm? mm. anything that po politicians are in control of follow the dollar mm. and you will see why things were done as they are mm. where the money goes is and etc we talk about for instance uh, war has always made more m m made a greater mass of people rich than any mm. other factor in in mm. in human culture because you see you where does the money go the money goes upward to the few who create the armaments yeah who make the demands for it. It not only made a great segment rich, but it also makes a great segment impoverished. Wow. Thank you. Uh, and that's and that creates the, the soup for other wars. And uh, that's, that's you know, we, we talk about burdening our children. I, I know you have grandchildren. That's I have it. two uh, children and a grandchild. Yeah. One, uh, I have, uh, you know, Nia and Dami, sure, nine years it. old and four yeah, years old. Lovely. And I don't want to burden my children with, not only do I want, do not want to burden them with debt, yeah, but right. I do not want to burden them with a world where we have to use violence to, to and, and subjugation and oppression yeah. to try to keep our standard of living. Yeah. And I think that the best way that we can try to do that is to use our, our standard of living in a ways that create the type of environment where, where we, we help people. Yes. We, we help 
We help feed them, we help clothe them, we help educate them. Not only our own people. That's it. But uh, we can't have this world where where we live the way that we live. Yeah. And 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 a world where the people are, are scratching in the sand sure. to, to to dig up roots to eat. That's exactly and, right. And and uh, they will they they uh, they will find a way. That's it. Uh, to to react to that because we it. all want to be free. In fact, it was interesting when the two uh, buildings fell, right? Yes. Uh, the cars fell. Is that we couldn't ask why? Why would anyone do that? Well, some why would did. Some, oh, some well, you did. could ask the question. Yeah, but but you see, is that if you really ask the question, what happened is you were told that you were uh, unpatriotic yeah. uh, uh, because we didn't want to deal with. Colonialism. And we never have wanted to deal uh, that's with it. Is that we haven't dealt with them? Uh, that's right. Is that we haven't done it? Uh, and it's interesting that England was the one who st who was the greatest colonialist of all, mm -hmm. who was uh, uh, who stayed on our side even when it was the world was saying you're wrong. All right? Mm -hmm. Is that uh, 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 when you when you think about 16 percent of the of the world uh, uh, uses up. 80 some percent of all the resources in the world year after year after year uh, is that what that really says yeah. is that uh, how did we get rich yeah. why aren't others uh, in the same in the same category and uh, and when we really look at it colonialism was the was the way that uh, uh, Europe got rich and we look at racism as the way the United States got yeah. rich. Is that when you look at this and the inability or the lack of desire to share with the rest of the world, yeah. hmm, then then uh, uh, automatically you're breeding war, as yeah. you said, the soup out of which war comes. Uh, that's a great line. I, I mean, I like that. Is the uh, because the poverty of it is that if we were really Christian. Hmm, is that we would have already made, uh, remade each one of the countries that we helped uh, uh, be destroyed by war. Yeah. If we were really Christian, we wouldn't have even been there fighting the wars. If we were really Christian, we could have found other ways to let people know that we love and we care. And that's what I mean by radical love. That's has to be radical enough mm -hmm. that you're willing to, to look at your condition and theirs and be willing to share it. You know, it is interesting is that even the generals know better. General Eisenhower made it very clear as he as he said at the end of his uh, 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 presidency mm -hmm. is that is that what we must remember is that every bomb that is dropped is uh, 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 creates uh, suffering for the poor. Every every bullet, yeah. uh, uh, and he goes through the whole thing. What he's and he's really saying is that the the materials that should be used and the money and the taxes mm -hmm. uh, for helping people are, are used up in destruction, yeah. and as Martin said, creates more problems than it solves. Let me also tell you what Martin said. Uh, Martin counseled us on the uh, evening of his death that uh, there will be difficult times ahead. And true enough, there will be difficult times ahead. And these are uh, challenging times for every person that wants to follow, that needs to follow the way that Jesus did, which was to love humanity without conditions and without fear. True. I want to thank you for being with me, uh, C.T. And I want to uh, give you what... Uh, Diane Reeves has uh, said one time that God and time are synonymous and that God in time will, re will reveal all things. Be still, stay in love, and pay attention. Now, I want to thank you all for being with us uh, at our very first program of Every Church of Peace Church. Stay tuned for the, uh, to your local listings for the next showing of the show. We'll be back every week with a new guest, with a new vocalist, with a new 